Welcome back, everyone. Adam LaFaccia, your moderator, rejoining you, and thank you so much for joining us for our next session, The Art of Style. I'm going to uh, just stop wasting time here, and I'm going to turn the floor directly over to Jenna Bonastali to talk to us about uh, her program. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It is exciting to be here with you all in the digital realm. Um, kind of funny to not be able to ask questions and see faces, but hopefully we can get to know each other via uh, these chats. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe maybe everyone could just type into the open chat right now. Um, you know, your name will show up, but something about your role, like teacher, student, folklorist, artist, you know, learner, and um, where you're at. So if it doesn't say that, so if, if everyone could type that in right now, that would be that would be a great thing to sort of see around. Yeah, and, and in fact, I've also launched a poll on the screen. So if you happen to be one of these uh, options that we already have built in, feel free to just click on the gray bubble that best corresponds to your answer, and then you can share any other details with us there in the chat box. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, great to see. All right, we can close that. So it looks like there are a lot of program people as well. Um, I know some people will be floating in and out. So feel free to type any questions or thoughts or comments into that box. And I know Adam has been kind of culling and selecting some, so he'll be doing that. Um, my name is Jenna. I am an artist and a teacher. I live in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I work for an organization called Kids Smart. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about a curriculum that we've developed for an after-school class of fifth and sixth graders um, that we are sort of piloting this fall for the first time. Um, so I wanted to just sort of pull this up in case some people are new right now, or maybe you, you sort of heard what, what Diana was talking about earlier. Um, and I think as artists, we talk about inspiration and getting inspiration from other artists. And I think uh, Zora, as a figure in history and in culture and in art, is somebody who is really powerful and influential. And um, in class, we have talked about who she was and what she did um, in this country and other places. and. Um, what her role was, and I sort of wanted to just pull out a couple things from this statement um, that were particularly pertinent to sort of the fifth and sixth grade audience, ten and eleven year olds as they are developing as young artists. And those things were uh, creative expression, ideas, values, skills, and knowledge rooted on the African continent and in the American experience and communication of self definitions, communities with which people identify, their creativity, and their style. Um, that is part of the reason why we called our visual arts class the art of style. Um, so here are some of the students who are part of the class. There are about 15 students. 80% of them are, are young boys, <laughs> and the rest are girls. Um, this is Landon, Jasmine, Paris, Dejan, Rustin, and Brianna, um, to mention some. Uh, this slide I probably could spend about 10 minutes on, and I'm not going to, because if you if you want to learn about sort of the context of the educational situation in New Orleans right now, that is your know, presentation in itself. Um, so what I will tell you about is this one sort of specific group and what, what we've been doing. Um, Kids Smart is an organization that places artists, visual and performing artists, in schools throughout the city, both in in-school residency programs and in after schools. And right now we're working probably in about 25 different schools in different capacities. Um, so the after school partner in this case is a school called Akili Academy. Um, a couple just sort of interesting things about Akili is that it uh, is in the newly renovated William France School Building, which is actually where Ruby Bridges went to school um, it, during, right after um, integration in the 60s. And I included a little link that is something that could be really interesting to click on and read more about um, from the Ruby Bridges Foundation. And it says a little bit about the neighborhood and the history of the neighborhood in case you're interested in reading about that. Um, but one thing that is pretty significant to mention is that 
because of all the changes that happened um, post Katrina in the school system here in New Orleans, um, kids are bused to different schools all over the city because schools are run um, by this big district called the Recovery School District, which again, I'm not going to get into, but the point being that most of the students come um, from different neighborhoods throughout the entire city. Um, and the pro program is funded by a 21st century grant for enrichment. Um, so students have a choice of a lot, a lot of different um, after school classes that they can take. And so these students elected to take visual art. Um, it's fifth and sixth graders, and we work together for one hour every afternoon from 4 to 5 p.m. Um, students have also been in school since 7.30 in the morning, which is a significant thing to just note. Um, so a couple key questions and goals um, in writing this curriculum and trying it out are how could we encourage students to make personal connections to the themes of Will to Adorn and um, really kind of feel it for themselves. Um, how can we create a focus on making during our art class, during a one hour class, because the kids do really want to have a chance to make something. Some of them don't have art as an elective during the regular school day. Um, and how can we move towards being able to talk about our own artwork and the artwork of others? Um, so I'm hoping maybe we can open an open chat box because, like I said, we call this class the art of style. And so thinking about sort of some of the connections between art um, and visual art in particular and style, I'm hoping that some people can type in, uh, you know, if, if you were to say style is, what's something that you might come up with? Great. And you'll notice that we did drop a chat box there into the middle of the screen. So feel free to share your thoughts with us on what style is in that box. Any adjectives that you might come up with. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be a definition per se. Just kind of what you think of when you hear that word. Not even necessarily in relation to clothing or, or anything. Just you hear the word style is. <laughs> this is cool to, to read. How I identify myself inside and out, personal, an expression of your values, how you do what you do, panache. I like that, Sally. Um, great. How you present yourself, unique, a mix of individual and group ideas that shape your choices. Cool. Adam, can we move that box to the side or can I move on to the next slide? Okay, awesome. Great. Um, so we did this in the beginning of class, and some of the things that, that they came up with were unique, explosion, what you think is in your mind, peace, fun, expression. Um, some people did talk about fashion, but it was interesting to just kind of distinguish that word as separate. Um, so I'm just going to go through um, and show some images from some of the projects that we've done this fall um, to give you a sense of, of what our our curriculum has looked like. This is a total work in progress. So uh, I'm going to try and leave at least five minutes at the end for any comments. So if you see something and I sort of go past it, please feel free to, to jot a question down and we can talk about it towards the end. Um, so we started out by looking at, um, well, to make sketchbooks and introduce ourselves um, by looking at names and different ways that people might express themselves by writing. Um, and it was kind of a beginning of the year introduction activity, introducing ourselves and learning about who everyone was, because this is my first year working at that site um, as well. So we looked at some things from history, like the Book of Kells um, in Ireland and Illuminated Manuscript. And then we looked also at this graffiti wall that a friend of mine has worked on, where each person took a different section of the graffiti wall and made it their own. So the wall is like full, it's like a quilt of different styles on the same wall. And we thought about these questions, you know, where do you see personal style? Where do you see adornment? How can artists show something about themselves to the world? 
and each person then um, made a sketchbook that we were going to use in class. So it had a blank cover on it. And what we used is we just um, used colored pencils on cardstock, and then we used gloss medium to make them really nice and shiny and final, make them feel finished. Um, the next thing that we did was to start to kind of use our sketchbook. Again, this is sort of getting to know you and learning about who everyone is and trying to be comfortable in the space with each other. Um, and this came from actually an idea from Mind Builders. Each of us has unique talents, skills, abilities, things you like to do. You know them. They are part of you. Other people don't necessarily know while they're looking at you. Silently write those things on the inside of a person if you want to draw your person or a shape. Um, and this student wrote, I'm good at helping, I'm good at social studies, I'm good at debating, I'm good at science, I'm good at being me. Um, we started to talk about shapes and colors and thinking about how those might be choices that we make in terms of what we like, what our favorite things are. Um, so one of the prompts for their sketchbook when they came in one day was, if I could be any color in the rainbow, I would be... So this is from Nikai, and he wrote, if I was a color in the rainbow, I would be blue. I would be this color because it is beautiful. Blue reminds me of the sky and the sea. Blue makes me feel special. Blue represents me because it shows that I am everywhere. Um, we went on to kind of think about some rules and some ways of being in the, in the community that we wanted um, and came up with these together in the first couple weeks. Um, listening and looking while someone's speaking, being kind and respectful to others, respecting classroom materials, classroom and the materials. Um, and the last one a, a student named Joseph came up with and has really come to be a, a quite a statement for us as a group, which is be understanding that each person works hard on their art and everyone is unique, um, which for 10 and 11 year olds is a really, really big deal. <laughs> um, so I put this quote in here because, A, because I, I think it's really nice, and B, because it sort of came to um, creating an after-school space where people were, where, where students were really making things. Because I feel like sometimes when we sit down and write curriculum, there is a lot of talking involved. And I was observing that, you know, it had been a really long school day for, for these kids, and they really just wanted to use materials and make things. Um, so this, this quote reads, there is an inherent pleasure in making. We might call this joy de faire, like joie de vivre, um, to indicate that there is something important, even urgent, to be said about the sheer enjoyment of making something exist that didn't exist before of using one's own agency, dexterity, feelings, and judgment to mold, form, touch, hold, and craft physical materials, apart from anticipating the fact of its eventual beauty, uniqueness, or usefulness. Um, so at this point, we started actually really just working on making um, and using materials. We started with paper, and we made patterns um, using collage techniques. Um, we talked about what a pattern is, a repeated decorative design, decoration, a motif, an ornament, a marking. Um, and we looked at where you might see patterns in the world. Why might people choose to wear certain patterns? Um, what does that say about who they are, um, what they like, um, what colors might people choose, what colors go well together, what colors contrast each other, what colors complement each other. Um, and here are some of the patterns that the students made. Um, that's Brandon, Andrew, and Brianna's. These slides take a minute to load sometimes, I think, because they're a bunch of pictures. Um, I will add a photo that is not in here right now, is that what we actually did um, in the past week was um, we made iron-on transfers of these patterns and put them on t-shirts, and they are on our blog, which we will give you guys the link to, um, which was, has been very cool. So we, we, we um, copied them and uh, made, you know, onto transfer paper and then put them onto a t-shirt. Everyone brought their own, so they're all different colors. They look really nice. Um, so here are some others. This is Joseph and Bryant and Tyrone.
I think I can actually. I can actually copy the link to that post into the tab. So I just put it there. Um, and then after we made our patterns, um, I have been thinking about a lot of ways to try and uh, help the students to support each other. We have a few students in our class who have pretty um, profound special needs and have a lot of trouble writing um, independently, especially a couple students who are in um, self-contained classroom environments during the day. And so we've been trying to like, you know, do these, these writing exercises where one person talks and the other person writes and one person writes and the other person talks. Um, Etc. And so this is Nathan, who's helping Rustin to write um, about his pattern after they finished. Um, just to read uh, one of the one of the pieces of writing about the pattern. I won't read the whole thing. Um, I'll read a couple sections. Um, this pattern reminds me of fire. The shapes represent my life. I see myself through fire, but I do not burn. I am unstoppable. I feel somehow like I have power. I love to be me. My art maybe is not that good, but I'm just like everyone else. I'm me, and I always will be. Art is an expression of being yourself. You're not going to be shy. So that was from Landon. Um, the second project that we did, and, and this partly came from um, you know, students requesting and saying, when are we going to paint? When are we going to paint? When are we going to paint? Because, you know, a lot, I think it's really important to remember in the context of public schools right now, a lot of kids don't have art. And even if they do have art class, they really don't get a chance to um, use a wide range of materials. And so when they take art after school, it's really something that they're looking forward to is being able to, to use materials. And so um, we started a painting project as our second project, partly also to kind of get at this, this idea of each of us being unique and each of us having our own style that is personal and based on things we know and things that we like. Um, I notice, and I think a lot of teachers notice, a lot of students wanting to make the same things, whether it be like anime cartoon characters or Sonic the Hedgehog or um, all of these kind of, especially games at this age, I feel like there's a lot of um, cultural markers that are bigger and less personal. Um, so one of these sort of standbys that I always use um, with a lot of groups in different ways is this um, I Come From poem, uh, and Sally put the link in to the chat box. Um, it's, it's by George Ella Lyon, and it's a list poem, so it's just I am from, and you brainstorm places, people, sounds, smells, sights, memories, you know, things that are really personal and unique. Um, so some one of the lines from her poem is, I'm from fudge and eyeglasses, um, from 10 verses I can say myself. So things that are personal. So first we did that. Um, and then we also looked at the work of Romare Bearden and, and talked about who he was as an artist and his journey from living in North Carolina to moving to New York City and how he showed things about his life in his artwork. Um, and then we made these personal sketches based on our own lines of poetry. Uh, so this is on Deja's and she talks about going to a jazz parade in the French Quarter and she says, I saw a guy in a silver suit dancing. It was so nice. He was like a robot dancing to hip hop. Um, so just trying to get some specificity. Um, I am from Snowballs in October. Snowballs being sort of the quintessential summer um, treat that goes away in the fall here in Louisiana. Uh, I am from laughter, music, and technology. So everybody had their own sketch. Um, and we really talked about here the artistic process and how it takes time to make something beautiful. Um, and hopefully some of the paintings will come up. That was from, I am from Michael Jordan and explosions and laser tag, I think. <laughs> Let's 
The next one is I am from ice cream in the August heat. Food is a really big thing, as you can see. This is Jasmine. I am from ice cream in the August heat. And the last one is um, Paris. And that is from, I am from laughter, music, technology, and Paris, France. And then she also put um, some lyrics to a song that, that, that was important to her. Um, so after this project, um, we actually had the, had the real pleasure of having Jade Banks visit um, here, and, and we co-taught a class, and it was really lovely. Um, we did a listening and not listening activity uh, to really kind of start to think about, you know, just talking to each other and talking about our artwork and who people are. Um, everybody was tasked with not listening to something really important their partner had to share, and then listening and thinking about what the difference felt like. Um, so what does it look like to not listen? It looks like wearing headphones. It looks like making noises. It looks like getting out of your seat and walking away. It feels like being sad and ignored. It feels like being disrespected. It feels bad. Um, listening looks like staring at somebody, asking questions, concentrating. It makes you feel glad. It makes you feel like you made a friend. It makes you feel interesting and paid attention to. Um, so again, this, this is sort of getting at how this might connect to making artwork and also talking about the artwork of others. And again, back to that sort of rule that we came up with at the beginning of the year, which is being understanding that each person works hard on their art and that everyone is unique um, has you know, kind of come up over and over again and been something that we sort of keep coming back to. Um, part of the reason that, that, we, that Jade and I chose to do that exercise is because we knew before the break we wanted to try and have a guest artist come in, um, which based on you know, various challenges had been hard to that point in the year. Um, so we had um, a guest artist come in from the Yellow Pocahontas Mardi Gras Indian tribe. Um, his name is Daryl Montana, and he had actually been um, interviewed by Diana Briggs, who did some Will to Adorn research. Um, so I, I don't want to rush too much through this, and, and I think that Sally, there's a PDF that Sally is going to drop into the, um, the box over on the right side that helped us to kind of come up with some questions for, I mean, talking about our own artwork, but also listening to um, an artist and learning about an artist, um, something new, coming up with some questions. Um, so what we did was to really think about creating like a bank of questions. Um, the link, I think, the PDF is actually up on the on the left hand side. I don't know if that's where you all can see it. The link is to City Lore's education program because it, it came from City Lore, but I don't know that the PDF actually appears on their web page. Um, I think they're two separate things. And for anyone um, interested in, in downloading that, you can just click where it says artistprompts.pdf in the top left hand corner, and then just click on the download file button and it'll pull that right down to your computer. Yeah. So the artist prompts is a list of questions that actually was designed for artists who were writing letters to students about their own work. Um, and, but they turn out to be really great questions to ask guests. And so instead of having the students come up with their own questions, partly because of time and partly because just that it's difficult um, to come up with good questions, we sort of created a question bank. So some of them were, you know, when did you know you wanted to be an artist? Do you come from a family or community of artists? What are your inspirations? Um, and then Daryl and Spy Boy Yancey and his daughter, Miss Jancy, came in and we had sort of a 45-minute show and tell with them um, it, during which they you know, showed us different things. He, he, he did not obviously wear a whole suit um, when he came in to talk, but he was able to bring little parts of suits and pass them around um, and talk about these different elements of a Mardi Gras Indian costume. 
um, and, you know, the distinctions between uptown and downtown and flat and three-dimensional and what it's made of. For example, you can see the stitching there is dental floss, you know, and we felt we were able to feel it and talk about why it's really important that this is very, very, very strong, um, why you wouldn't just use glue, why you have to stitch it with your hands. Um, so that is kind of the way that our session went, and the kids were able to um, see these different elements and ask some questions, like who makes it, how is it made, why is it made. Um, it was great at the end, so Daryl kind of looked around and said, you know, guys, 5,000 hours go into a suit, <laughs> which it feels like a little bit of an exaggeration, but really when you see this detail, it could be true. And and so he talked about sort of this, this element of time and the fact that it's not going to happen overnight, um, that there really is a lot of process involved in being an artist and being a craftsperson. Um, and I think that that, that, is, that is a new thing for, for a lot of young people to hear um, and to actually see in, in person. And so in the spring, we are hoping to have a number of more artists and actually sort of hopefully take a field trip where we can interview a group of artists at a marketplace because it's hard to sort of take a field trip during the after school time. We're going to try and think of a school day when it can happen and we can do that. Um, anyway, so I, I feel like I kind of was talking that whole time, obviously. I, I can't see any of you, but you're out there. Thanks for listening. Um, <laughs> The link to our blog is right there. There isn't that much text on there yet. We've kind of just been putting pictures up, but um, I hope that maybe maybe you have some thoughts or questions or ideas. Um, anyone? Great. And I saw a lot of comments popping in as you were moving through here. Just some beautiful work uh, that your students have done that you, you showed us today. It was wonderful to see the pieces that they worked on and then to, to have those up close and personal looks at the uh, Mardi Gras costume pieces as well. Just beautiful types of work all around. Thanks. Does anyone have any specific questions for Jenna? I see one here asking if uh, your grant provides payments for guest artists. Oh, that's actually a great question. Um, and it's something that, that we've been having a lot of casement, like sort of challenge with, um, it, it doesn't specifically, um, we are using some of the, some of the will to adorn youth partnership stipends to go towards that, and then um, we have in the spring, we actually might um, participate in the marketplace at Jazz Fest, which is uh, obviously, as people know, a big festival that happens here and has tons of craftspeople and, um, participants there, and they have a kid's tent, um, and usually they just have performances from kids, and they pay for the buses, and they pay, they give, I think they give some kind of a stipend for people to participate, so we're, we're looking into how we might actually be able to, to mix these two things somehow, but the short, the, the shorter answer is no, there aren't specific stipends, but we were, we are intend to and have been um, paying stipends for artists um, when they come to visit. We're making it happen. Basically. And just to clarify things from the administrative side, this is Sally. Um, we do provide small stipends to our site partners, but we don't stipulate how they use them. So if they need to use them for materials, that's fine. If they need to use them for um, you know, to support staff time, that's fine. And in, in Jenna's yeah. case, they were able to use that um, in part towards some of the guest artists, so we're really happy they were able to do that. And each site yeah. partner does um, did receive on loan from us an iPad Mini, an iPod, and a uh, Nikon D3100 uh, digital SLR camera for them to use throughout the course of the project. Yeah, which we have also been using. We've been using the iPad in class to record stuff recently, so we're getting there. We're, we're, we're saving some of our technology for the spring, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, wonderful. Any other thoughts, questions? We're done. 
It looks like we're at the end of the questions submitted thus far, but if you want to stick around and chat, and if people have questions that come in and they'd like to uh, type them in there, please feel free to continue to engage there. I think we'll actually wrap up this session and we'll just go off the air for one or two minutes as we get set for our next session on a little bit of an accelerated <laughs> schedule here, and then we'll come right back with everyone to launch right in. But a big thank you, Jenna, for joining us and for uh, covering all of this with us today. Really beautiful work. Okay, thanks everyone. Good to see you or, or be in the same, you know, virtual space with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Jenna. Bye. Likewise, thank Bye. you.